Hey, what's up guys? My name is Tom Spark. Welcome back to another video. Today we're checking out OVPN. One of the commenters here on the channel, maybe even you, uh, suggested that I check it out. So I'm going to check out this VPN in all the different categories that you've come to know while checking out the channel. And we're going to help you decide if this VPN is worth using or not. Hey guys, just a reminder to check out VPNTierList.com. It's a collection of all my ratings on the channel and you're going to find lots of helpful information here on how to choose a VPN. Anyways, back to the video. All right, guys. So the first thing we always check out is going to be pricing. And OVPN looks to be kind of interesting here. Uh, firstly, they don't really offer two or three year plans, which isn't usually the worst thing. I prefer VPNs that have good pricing for lower commitment models. So that way, if you don't like the VPN, you're not stuck with it. Uh, unfortunately here, $11 is a little bit pricey. I would say $10 is more of the standard price. Anything below $10 is a pretty good price in my opinion. Now 12 months for $84 isn't horrible, but I would say $60 for 12 months is more of what I would consider the standard VPN price. $50 for six months is expensive as well. So this isn't as expensive as ExpressVPN, which is $13, $100 for 12 months, or something like iVPN, which is $15 a month and even more for a year. But it's definitely not as cheap as stuff like TorGuard code with discount code TomSpark, $5 a month, $30 a year. Even AirVPN is around $7 a month and cheaper for a year as well. Um, so it's not going to be the cheapest VPN. It's not going to be the most expensive VPN. Maybe somewhere um, a little bit more expensive than the average VPN, like I said. Um, additionally, this VPN does look to be a little bit smaller with only 76 servers in 12 countries. Not a ton of servers, so we're going to have to see how speeds are. Um, you get four simultaneous device use, um, which is okay. Again, a five is more standard for $10 a month, so you're getting a little bit less and paying a little bit more here, in my opinion. Stuff like TorGuard recently has eight simultaneous connections, and I mentioned it is cheaper. So again, I remember that. 10-day um, money-back guarantee isn't that good either. Some VPNs offer 30 to 40-day money-back guarantees, so a little bit limited as well here. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and move on to the next section, testing out the application, and then we'll go on speeds and the other categories. All right, guys, it looks like my payment has been received, so let's go ahead and start it up. All right, guys, so this is what OVPN's application looks like. Um, we have kind of like a weird interface here. Uh, it's kind of like a lot of empty room down there. Can you really adjust it? Let's see. No. Looks like you can, but I guess you can't. Um, choose best server automatically. That's usually pretty nice. Again, I kind of noticed there's a limited selection of servers, um, but they might be fast. Um, we can fast. That's what I meant to say. Not fast. Um, kill switch disconnected. So these are some just kind of showing you what things are working. Um, not too clear about how to get this stuff working though. Current account. Okay, account. So it's kind of weird that they put uh, the settings in the account page. Usually it's, it's under settings or something. Um, so we have a kill switch, DNS leak. Um, what is DNS crypt? Uh, the open, the OVPN client enables you to use DNS crypt together with DNS servers. So it prevents a man in the middle attacks. We also have IP6, uh, what is compression? So compression could increase speeds, but also have security issues. Uh, high resolution, so with 4K, uh, that's good to see. Um, and some more auto connection features. So we do have some interesting features here I haven't seen before, like compression, DNS crypt. I'm not sure how useful they are really. So I think if OVPN really wanted to kind of up the ante a little bit, they might add some stuff like the ability to kind of change which kind of protocols you could use. It looks like it's really just using OpenVPN here. No support for IP2 or any other kind of protocols you could play around with. They could customize your ability to change the port. It doesn't look like you could configure that really here um, to just in case your, your VPN connection might be blocked. That doesn't really seem like too much of an option here. Um, we don't see that much stealth VPN settings here or ad blocking, um, advanced DNS customization. We have a little bit here with DNS crypt, which is cool. Um, not really much proxy support or custom server support for streaming servers or anything like that. So overall, it's a decent application, um, pretty easy to use and the layout's not too bad, but you know, it could have some more features to boot. So the first time that I tried to connect to OVPN, I actually couldn't get it to connect. Um, the kill switch actually activated um, 
but it doesn't seem to be connecting yet um, with automatic servers. Sometimes this is a problem with the kind of more finicky, wonky VPNs. So I actually did get OVPN up and running and it seemed like the problem was that in the account settings, it automatically checks activate IPv6. Um, looking on the troubleshooting, I was able to find that this could be one of the reasons why there's an error. So I've solved that problem. I definitely think that that shouldn't be automatically enabled, especially since it could contribute to errors. Um, and I think one reason I actually stopped checking out OVPN in the past is because I actually probably did get an error back then and it was just too, um, I got kind of not interested in even reviewing the product just because it didn't seem to be working. So it definitely can give a bad impression on the product if the wrong settings are connected that can contribute to errors. So something the team might want to look into. Anyways guys, on to the next section. Testing out OVPN speeds once I got it connected uh, provided pretty good speed results. Nothing out of this world but quite solid, around 100 megabits per second and a good upload rate. The latency was a little bit bigger than average, usually should be around 19 ms without VPN. Sometimes with VPN I don't get much increase in speed, but here we did get a, uh, a little bit increase in speed. However, nothing too bad. So now we are doing a PTP download with a Ubuntu file testing out the speeds. So far, it looks like it's gonna be just kind of uh, middle of the line, fluctuating between two to four, more like uh, around 2.5 megabytes a second. Um, a little bit faster there, 3.5, nothing too fast though. Um, with some of the fastest VPNs like TorGuard and ExpressVPN, we get up to around 10 megabytes a second or so. So that could be uh, one. So those are some of the best speeds you can get. This one, however, with OVPN doesn't look to be that fast. Um, maybe a tiny bit faster than the lower end of VPN speeds, but nothing that good. So in terms of OVPN's reputation, um, it looks to be pretty solid. They do not collect any activity or log anything when connected to the VPN service, which is not always the case with VPN providers. Sometimes they connect, uh, collect connection logs and bandwidth logs and various things like this. Uh, but OVPN looks to be pretty solid in this department. Just testing out a simple server does seem to come up with a Netflix proxy error, which is definitely a bummer. Or maybe we could test out some more servers or maybe contact support, see if they have any answers for us, but usually not a very good sign. All right, guys, thanks for making it to the final review section. So OVPN is going to get a 2.7 out of 5, not making it to tier 2, the usable recommended section. Tier 3 is not going to be that recommended for use. And why is that? Well, as you've seen from this review, OVPN is a little bit more expensive than average. The application just kind of feels a bit average. Um, speeds are pretty good in speed tests, but not that good in overall torrent download tests. Reputation here is fine. I couldn't find anything bad about it and they don't collect logs, which is very good. Um, support 2.5 out of 5 just because they don't have live chat and it's pretty standard. A day, a day later, you'll get a response or so the next night or whatever. Um, and streaming compatibility, I reached out to the team and as you could see, they don't support Netflix or streaming options, which is definitely a bit of a letdown since so many VPN providers do um, at least provide some options. So the team says they will try to encourage um, and update more stream compatibility in the future but as as of this review it doesn't have any stream compatibility which definitely hurts it and drives it down into tier 3 not really recommended for use territory overall guys this isn't the worst VPN it could have more servers it could have cheaper pricing it could just be overall better and I'm encouraging you to check out VPN to see which VPNs are better and why and thanks for checking out another VPN review See you later.